Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back uh, with quick hits. We're going to get into Mikey Garcia and his comeback today. He's not fought in about 19 months. Um, he's only fought once since that Errol Spence defeat, and we're going to break it all down where he goes next. But before we do that, please like and subscribe, uh, share. 3D boxing um, everywhere. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Please uh, follow us on all forms of social media, 3D boxing, 3D boxing blog. Also, the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, completely dedicated to Texas boxing. Uh, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. So please like and subscribe to that channel as well. Uh, help us get that monetized and up and running brand new channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Let's get into um, let's get into it, Mikey Garcia. Uh, it's the, in the fight that we were all clamoring for, which we were all begging for, Sandar Martin of Spain, uh, for no particular reason. I guess, you know, Mikey's been really inactive. And I, I, look, Mikey's fought so many good fighters. Jesse Vargas, Errol Spence, Robert Easter, Sergey Lipinitz, Adrian Broner, uh, you know, Rocky Martinez, uh, Juan Manuel Lopez, Orlando Salido, uh, Jonathan Barrios. I mean, there's so many good names on his resume. I'm not trying to beat him up. Okay, um, this is I'm I'm just gonna write this off as a tune-up fight, scheduled ten rounder in Fresno, which also makes no sense. Uh, Sandar Martin um, is best known for his win over Joe Hughes, that matters much. Uh, back in twenty late twenty nineteen, um, he also lost to Anthony Egit. Um, Back in 2017, uh, 117, 111, and 116, 112 twice. Eh, it looks like he was fairly competitive in that fight. He's got a win over Adam Matti, um, Andrea Scarpa. I, I mean, he, he's European-level guy for sure. Um, you know, it doesn't look like he's that special. It should be relatively easy work for Mikey. Uh, Mikey be 34. Uh, the end of this year. Um, you know, that, this fight counts for a whole lot. He should get rid of Sandon Martin. He should stop him. Uh, but Mikey's pushing it. Mikey's get, getting up there in years now. Um, it still seems like Mikey's a young cat, uh, but he's not. Um, you know, where does he go from here? You know, look, this fight's at 147. Um, I don't really get why. Mikey's not a wall to wait. Sandor Martin has fought predominantly at 140. Um, I get those names. I've just given you those were all at 140. I, I don't really understand when I announced the fight. I assumed that it was at 40. It's not. It's at 47. I don't really get it. I don't. Um, look, Mikey has to be able to make 140. He comes up all the way from 126, 130, 135, 140. He wasn't big at 140. Then he went up to 147 to fight Spence and Vargas. And I get that's where the money is. And we did notice career, you know, is on the back nine, to say the least, right? He's, he's getting up there in years. Um, but he's not a welterweight. He's too small. Um, you know, he struggled with Jesse Vargas. He got destroyed by Errol Spence. Um I think Mikey's a really good fighter. I like Mikey. I think he can be a player at 40. The problem is you got Ramirez, um, who, who held two belts, who just lost those two belts to tell who's all four belts at 40. Uh, but, I, look, if Mikey goes back down, I, it, it, what's his goal? Does he just want to get one more big money fight? It doesn't seem that way because he really, really, really wants to fight Regis. Regis is a great fighter, and that's a great fight. I love that fight. I don't know who I'd pick in that fight, but that's a great fight. Um, but it's not a huge money fight. Regis, as good as he is, and he's really good, it's not a big money draw. He never has been. Um, so you got two guys who are largely inactive, two really skilled fighters, uh, two of the most skilled fighters in the world, um, in my opinion, fighting in a fight that's not big money. Now, if he was trying to get a Crawford fight, 
uh, if you're trying to get Porter, um, if you're trying to get Ugas, something like that, I would say, okay, do it. You know, do it. If Pacquiao was still around. He was trying to get that. But, you know, I, Tank Davis at 40 is a bigger fight. Why not try to get Tank Davis? You know what I'm saying? Um, the fight that I always liked from was Barrios. Mario Barrios, you know, uh, Mikey, go check go check his, his, his history. He's fought in Texas a lot and has a big following, including in San Antonio. Um, I think Barrios in San Antonio is a great fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight. Um, it could be done at 40 or 47 or somewhere in the middle. Um, but, but I, I, I don't think his future is at 47 unless he's just looking to cash out, which, look, he's 33, he's about to be 34. That's old. It's not ancient. He does have a couple of years left if he really pushes it. Um, you know, he took that long layoff. Hopefully he rested his body. You know, go back to March 19. That was two and a half years ago. He's fought once. This will be his second fight in two and a half years. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's not a lot of action. Hopefully his body is rested uh, because I, he, he's really, really high level basic. For, for and I don't mean that to be an insult. He's really, really fundamentally sound. He's got good pop. He does everything really well. Uh, I, I don't know that he can beat, you know, he, well, he can't beat Spence, obviously. And he can't beat Crawford. Can he beat the rest of those? And, you know, he wouldn't fight Virgil Ortiz. Um, and that wouldn't be a huge money fight either. I, I, I really don't like the way he fits it at the 147 landscape. I think a fight with him and Josh Taylor at 140, him and Tank Davis at 140 are much more winnable All right, for Mikey. Um, and, and look, with Josh Taylor, you win one fight. And I, again, I'm not saying he could definitely beat Josh Taylor, although I do think I would pick him against Josh Taylor. Um, you're undisputed welterweight champ. Why not shoot for that fight? You know, that's a winnable fight. And it's a legacy fight because you'll be undisputed. I know he wants that 126, 30. He wants that fifth weight, uh, you know, belt in fifth weight class. He's not going to get it, I don't think. I don't think he can beat Ugas. He obviously can't beat Spence. He can't beat Crawford. So how's he's not going to get that belt. So I, I think, I really do think his best option is to go make a legacy for yourself at 140. You're fighting a 140 pounder at 147. So you get, to, in my opinion, Two junior welterweights fighting at welterweight. What's the point? Why not just fight at 140? You know? But those are the fights I'd like, I'd like to. I'd like to see him in. You know, the Sandra Martin fight, it, it's what it is. You know, it, he should take care of him. I'll say Mikey stops him in seven. Um, you know, Martin's not a puncher. I, I, I still think Mikey's got, you know, he's not, Mikey's not a knockout artist, but he, he's he got good pop. Uh, he's obviously really skilled. He's got impeccable timing. You know, there's a lot to like about Mikey. You know, and I do like Mikey. You know, I've had him in my pound. I don't have him currently on my pound for pound list at the Vargas fight and the inactivity. But I, I had him high on my pound for pound list for years. I, I think Mikey's really good. I think he can, could beat everyone at 40. But again, there's really good names that he can lose to. But he can't beat the names at 47. So I, I really like to see him come back down to 40 uh, and really and really test it there. Pro Gray, Josh Taylor, Mario Barros. Good names for him to fight there. Um, and let's see where it goes. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like and subscribe. Share on all forms of social media. 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Block. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest boxing news and rumors. Also, Texas Boxing Scene, a completely dedicated Texas Boxing, on uh, the YouTube channel. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, that channel, all proceeds go to Autism research and recovery as uh, so help us get that up and running get that monetized we'd really appreciate it uh it is october 13th 2021 ivan calderon is not in the boxing hall of fame let's make that change let's get the iron boy in um from texas to the world thank you and god bless don't miss a tweet post story or video 3d boxing is on twitter instagram and facebook Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.